Happy Halloween, and welcome to Gimcrack Video. Hey, you got anything uh, scary that we can watch? Oh, yes. Have you looked in the bargain bin? Is, uh, is that the one on the, under the sign over there that says, Warning Not for Public Consumption? Tell you what, they're five for the price of one. Yeah, but are they any good? <laughs> <laughs> So anyway, can you believe that hell is actually not as hot as Texas? Hello, everyone, and welcome to Found on Shelf, a podcast where, uh, well, usually we watch the strangest of the strangest movies that we can find. And while that is a tradition that we uh, hold dear, I would say it's been a little weird the last couple weeks. I um, I died. Yeah, that yeah, I had to do the show with with Game Crack. That that, was, that guy's that guy's a little much. A, a, a little bit, I, but was I just in the corner the whole time? Yeah, yeah, we 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 kept you over there. Um, uh, there are flies, blood. We just I I've you know I took your advice. You said that you know we have to be consistent with the show, so that's what I did. I feel like you could have buried me though. Yeah, well, I didn't have time. Hmm. Uh, okay. Okay. Um. But so you invited the evil demonic clerk from the cursed video store to co-host the podcast, yeah? Yeah. Well, Chris wasn't available, and he knows, and, and Gimcrack knows a hell of a lot about videos and about movies. So I was like, eh, let's just bring him on board. Right. I mean, he didn't quite come voluntarily, but I I got him on board. It's okay. And then. As thanks or as revenge, he brought me back to life. Well, yeah, I still haven't figured out which one that is. <laughs> I'm life. I'm I'm in my body, but my body doesn't appear to be alive as such. Um, which, by the way, can you pass the scotch tape? My finger fell off again. Ah, oh, fuck again. Hold on. Yeah. Here you go. Just, uh, yeah. ah! No, God. Sorry, so, I just, um, it's just I, your hand it, it was uh, like uh, yep. raw flesh. And it was, it was that there was my was fault. in front of I, me. I, and uh, I, I got a little too close. Uh, so we are, we are filming in person. Uh, still, this is what we decided to do for the whole month. And, yes. And um, uh, I, I do have, I, I, well, while I, while I do welcome you back, I, I, I don't in uh, I, I trust you. I just don't entirely trust your zombie instincts. Um, so that's that's why I've got you now chained up in the corner. Um, so you're you can still move about. You've got a couple of feet that you can kind of, you know, pace back and forth if you need to. Um, I figure you don't really need appreciate to use the bathroom. That. Yeah. You know, uh, so and also the the, uh, the the raw ground meat you keep throwing my way has been nice. Yeah. What's Next that? to the local butcher shop up the street for that. What was that thing about calf's brains with virgin brains that never had a thought? You kept muttering <laughs> that. I feel like that was a <laughs> reference to something that I wasn't here for. Yeah, well, I, I did sit you down and watch a movie with you. Uh, yeah, so um, I am stuck in a terrible unlife. But I guess the show goes on. So I, I picked the movie this week and... I picked the 1993 classic "My Boyfriend's Back." Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, have have you heard of this movie before? Uh, I've heard of the song, um, but I have I had not heard of. Uh, I'd actually never heard of this movie. It's quite bizarre to me that I've never heard of it. Considering who's all in it, it is interesting, right? Because this yeah. is a this is a film directed of all people um by bob uh balaban who um you will know from kind of a little bit of everything i mean he's in uh close encounters of the third kind he's in capote he's in a mighty wind he's in gosford park he's in the new asteroid city he's in a lot of wes anderson movies like mm -hmm. a lot of wes anderson movies 
But he's in like 127 things. I'm looking up at his IMDb for like a grand total of films. Um, he he shows up in just like a ton of things, and this is a film he directed. He's directed way less than he's acted in, um, but this is a film he decided that he should um, give life to. All right. Give life to? That's a pretty bad joke. I, it's just my deepest desire right now, so don't worry about I, it. I thought, I, I thought maybe being undead would improve some of the jokes, but... Uh, I, my neurons um, literally aren't firing, so I don't know um, why you thought true. that my material would be better. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> we shall see. So yeah, but like a ton of people are, are, are involved in this movie because... Uh, the screenwriter is Dean Laurie. Do you know who Dean Laurie is? Mm, that name does sound familiar, but I can't place it. So let me tell you some other things that he wrote. This is the first screenplay he wrote. Okay. He followed this up with the screenplay for Jason Goes to Hell, The Final Friday. All right. An absolutely terrible film. Yeah. Not not the worst Friday the 13th film. <laughs> yeah. Uh, mm, uh, mm. Uh, I, uh, he, he, then uh, Major Pain, mm, the mm-hmm. Damon Wayans movie. Yeah, yeah, okay. You know what's funny about that is he goes on to be a writer for My Wife and Kids, the Damon Wayans TV <laughs> show from 2001 to 2005. <laughs> all right. Wow! All right, he's a writer on a lot of TV shows. He's a writer in Arrested Development, but what's he's a writer on I Zombie. Oh, okay. Uh, but what's really what's really interesting? He's one of the three uh, showrunners for the Harley Quinn TV show. Okay, which is fantastic. I, I have not uh, I have not watched it. I I did bring something up to you, and you're like, "That sounds like an episode of Harley Quinn." I'm like, "I think I need to watch this now because it sounds." <laughs> oh right. Well, specifically, I was referencing an episode in which Bane um, both becomes giant and becomes a sex crazed maniac and literally humps the the city into destruction like a giant horny Godzilla just fucking uh, skyscrapers into dust. That's amazing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's a fantastic show. Just just kind of a lot of a lot of like pedigrees. I mean fucking Philip Seymour Hoffman's in this movie. Is he? Where was oh, he yeah. at? Where was he at? <laughs> did you, you did you notice him? Yeah, he was the bully, right? Yeah, he's Chuck. Yeah. yeah. You ate Chuck. Chuck. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. You know what's funny is I did not. Uh, I I didn't. I didn't place him at first, but as soon as you said his name, I'm like, oh yeah, that was him. Mm-hmm. Easy. Yeah. 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 So that's it's 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 funny how many people are in this little movie that really flopped and did terribly and faded into oblivion. Yeah. Um, Matthew Fox from uh, I we know from either Party Five or Lost. Uh, Andrew Laurie is the main guy. He was in the Buffy the Vampire Slayer movie. The year before the the movie, my boyfriend's back is a film about a teenage zombie trying to go to prom uh, with the most popular girl in school. Yeah. In a nutshell. That's yeah, that's that's the basic pitch. Mm -hmm. Um, I was thinking uh, for a pitch, it's it it was very much reminded me of like a uh, a Parker Lewis can't lose or a Ferris Bueller type movie. So it's basically like imagine if like Ferris Bueller was a zombie. Mm -hmm. Well, but it's not the character Ferris Bueller. But yeah, the, the yeah, I don't know how. Are, to, are you trying to say like it's a John Hughes vibe? Yeah, basically, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's very John Hughes adjacent. Although the character is is much more just kind of like um, I don't really know how to describe him because he's positioned as like at at first as like the kind of like ducky beta male type, you know, mm-hmm. quote unquote, um, type uh, character who just is going to like uh, obsess over this girl that he doesn't know and shoot a shot. And then magically it works out, even though he's a little creepy kind of vibe. And that's really not what the movie ends up being. Uh, It goes into some different directions. Yeah. Really weird tone. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Mm-hmm. Very kind of uh, early, like, uh, Tim Burton kind of style. Mm -hmm. Like, it kind of had like an Edward Scissorhands-y kind of freaky things are going on, but people aren't really too bothered by it and it's just kind of almost normal and i would uh cancel out over scissor hands and instead raise you gross point blank i did i you know what i really like that movie that's a fantastic movie it's one of my favorite movies 
an amazing soundtrack. Mm-hmm. Um, oh yes, yeah, fantastic. And it's it's just it's one of those movies that not a lot of people talk about. I don't know no, why. but it has the same type of thing where he'll be like, I, I, like, oh yeah, I'm a hitman. I murder people for money. <laughs> Right. And they just they just don't react to it. They think he's dead. They think he's lying. But then towards the end of the movie, he's like, he murders someone in the high school, and someone just walks right. up. And is like, oh, really? Kind of thing. It's like it's very yeah. <laughs> very similar vibe, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, I Ghost Point Blank is a better film. Don't get me wrong. Yes. But yes, my fault. It hits some interesting notes. Yes. Hey, uh, right. so, I do have so, a trailer for it if you'd like. Yeah, let's play it. All right, let's check it out. I hope I loaded the right trailer this week. I didn't double check it. They say when you're dead, you're dead. They say you only get one chance at life. But for childhood sweethearts, Missy and Johnny, true love will never die. He came back from the dead for me. God, my boyfriend won't even pump gas for me. By God, if it ain't a zombie out with a living woman. What do you have against Johnny besides the fact that he's dead? He's a stinking zombie, you idiot. He's been gone for such a long time. My dad will go berserk if he finds out I went out with a dead guy. You stupid dead zombie pond scum. There's a lot of prejudice against the undead. Horror of the undead. Trap. Zombie lover. We want the zombie! Hey! Pretty damned active for a dead guy. Come on, let's get it, guys. Hey, quit it! If you're gonna kill him, you're gonna have to kill me. I mean it. Ah. My boyfriend's back. Well, I hope somebody eats a whole damn bunch of you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it was just a lot. Of, at least it was a short trailer this time. <laughs> it wasn't like a fucking five minute long trailer like the last ones. Eesh. Uh,. But yeah, that, that that kind of uh kind of basically sums sums up. So when you first you said you saw this movie when you were six? Yeah, six or seven, give or take. And how did you end up discovering it? Was it just you saw something it was on the like show on, if you wanted to watch it? No, it was like in on like Showtime or HBO or something at the time. Mm. That makes but sense. What are the, what one of the movie channels? Probably stars. Because yeah. it's got a very stars vibe. It's like the what? Because it feels like the movie that you'd wind up with after the good channels had taken their pick, which is what yeah, stars and, is sensibly. And any time that you called to like complain about your cable bill, they just gave you three months of stars for free. Yeah, <laughs> you, you want to see Cutthroat Island again? Here's half stars. <laughs> I used to work for Directv. I know they have. We had a, we had a free month of free three months of stars button that we could push. <laughs> <laughs> Who even owns stars? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but, but yeah, it's got a very stars encore vibe, and one of those channels just had it, and I just watched it all the time. Yeah, back when they'd like have one movie and they'd play it like a hundred times in the month. So, any <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of movies that I saw in in pieces. Like you'd catch the middle of it here, you catch the beginning of it here, the end of it there, and like okay. Your brain would have to put it all together. That's why I have so many movies confused, I think. <laughs> and it's probably, it was just that I saw it during like one month, but I watched it enough time that it's burned in my brain. So I'm like, hey, this is a fun movie, I yeah. think. And so we picked it and, you know, luckily it was still f- uh, fun. Yeah, it was. You mm-hmm. right there? Yeah. Uh, you, you, yes. Do you need me to throw you some more meat? Uh, 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 yes, please. <laughs> All right, hold on, hold on. All right, there you go. All right, what were we? So, uh, we're we're talking about um, uh, my my co-host is back. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, all right, the the movie. The movie starts uh, with uh, him. It's it's a first person narrative movie, narration movie, and it starts with him kind of like recounting his life and his obsession with like Missy, right? Missy McCloud. Yeah, oh, you know, one crazy summer. That's kind of the movie that this gives me a vibe off of. I don't know that. Oh, you don't know one crazy summer? John Cusack. Uh, um, it was one of the Savage Steve Holland films. Demi Moore, Bobcat. Uh, it's got a ton of people. Is that the ski instructor one? 
Um, no, this, yeah, I don't know this in, one then. in the same kind of vein as that one, except for this one, uh, was a guy that wrote like, uh, cartoons and liked to play basketball. That was John Cusack. I will have to check that out. Cause I, I get, you know, we're circling a John Cusack, um, uh, spiral. We are. We're- so yeah, the, the basic, the basic thing here is that, like, he's always been ex- obsessed with Missy. He's never been able to like do anything about it he hasn't he hasn't been brave enough he bought um this amazing gift for her when he was like what a child i, I don't know from children's age just a child I think, was, I think he said he was six or seven or something like that yeah and he, he chickened out of giving it to her and then it cuts to um today which is the day after she broke up with her boyfriend during senior year right before senior prom and he's right. going to ask her out yeah, and it's all done in a comic book style. I kind of like the intro just kind of being done like that to get you up to pace without doing too much. Yeah, it's uh, it's riffing on like, um, you know, EC Comics or Creepshow. It also, like like Creepshow, it's, do- it's done to save money. Oh, yeah. But it's, it's, I mean, it didn't really have anything like the comic book didn't have anything to do with the movie. So that kind of threw me off. Yeah, exactly. It's like like the aesthetic of like a Tales from the Crypt comic, not in a way that had anything to do with it. <laughs> it wasn't diegetic. All right. So, so, so yeah, so that's that's kind of the gist of it. Um, Missy breaks up with her, her boyfriend. He decides he's going to make a move and it's the old classic. I'm going to ask her to prom and then my life will be better. So there we go. So, yeah, I guess I guess we can we can kind of get the ball rolling on this here. Um, there's a lot of dream sequences in this movie. It had a really fun, like, sex fantasy right off the bat. Yeah, where he gets made fun of for having small junk. Or what did they say? <laughs> it, it wasn't regulation size. Yeah, it wasn't regulation size. He just puts his hands all small. Uh, <laughs> it had some little, very, very uh, juvenile humor. Very much uh, 12, 13-year-old boy humor throughout this whole movie. That is true. Yeah, it's it's like a lot of a lot of movies that are PG thirteen are really just R rated movies that had a couple things stripped out so it can make the PG thirteen movie rating for theaters. Mm-hmm. This was like a PG thirteen movie, just like it mm-hmm. was for a thirteen year old boy. This is what the movie was made for. <laughs> I think because we're just thirteen year old boys at heart. Oh, I think you. I think you just heard heart and got distracted. Sorry about that. Um. <laughs> you know what, Patrick? You are such a shut up, you little zombie slut. <laughs> I actually want a shirt that says that <laughs> zombie slut. Shut up, you little zombie slut. Like glitter, you know, really make the statement. Oh yeah, in nice cartoony letters. Shut up, you zombie slut. Um. So so yeah, and Missy's boy ex boyfriend, who is played by Matthew Fox, who. Yeah, I swear he plays the same exact character in everything he's ever been in. Um, he goes and wins her over, wins her back. And he's like, yeah, we're going back to prom. So then Johnny comes up with a great plan um, to try to win her heart back, <laughs> which is one of the stupidest plans. Yeah. So it's, it's the idea of uh, you see this in movies sometimes it's or TV shows or sitcoms. And the plot is he's going to bribe his best friend to pretend to be a a thug, a thief, a ruffian of some kind, and like assault or rob um, the girl, and then he will jump in and save the day and look like a hero, and the other guy will run away. Yep. So the I because it works in every yeah, movie, it's, right? Yeah, it's 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 never yeah. backfired even once. So not once. Um, he he gets his his best friend to to put on a ski mask and he gives him a gun because this is America and yeah. uh, he's like okay come in here to, to, to go to the convenience store where Miss works and he's like all right I'm gonna pretend to um to rob I need you to pretend to rob this store and then I'm gonna save Missy and win her heart right and uh, and and he gives him a water gun. That looks like a real gun. Oh. Because at one point when he's outside, he kind of goes... And it I wasn't water. sure I missed that part. It yeah. could go either way. <laughs> and um, yeah. 
so he he the friend is pacing back and forth, and a real uh, th- uh, thief shows up and tells and put and points a gun at him, tells him to scram. And obviously, what you, uh, what the thing that you think is going to happen is going to happen. He breaks in our boy Johnny. He thinks that this is his friend, and that he can stand up to him. But it's a real uh, thief, and he ends up shooting Johnny dead. Yes, and with his last breath, he asks Missy to the dance. And she says, yeah, sure, yeah, I'll go with you, because why would you, you, this person literally just threw himself in front of a bullet to save your life, of course, and they're dying, of course you're going to tell them what they want to hear. But what ends up happening, Johnny comes back from the dead and digs his way out of the grave so that he can go to prom with Missy. I, I do like the, uh, the funeral service, his mom, his mom drops a sandwich in there for him. <laughs> Not only that. The actual rising from the grave sequence is awesome. It's shot really well. It's super dramatic. The music is amazing. Straight yeah. up horror movie fun. I really wish more of the movie would have leaned into the horror because that was fucking awesome. Yeah, that was one part that I kind of wish that would have happened. Okay, um, and then like you're I, like, well, not seeing the trailer before I watched it, I was not sure what the tone of this movie was really going to be. And then all of a sudden he's like slowly creeping up to the Crypt Keeper. And then he slowly and then the Crypt Keeper guy turns around. He's like, ah, you look like you just crawled out of a grave and then just starts talking to him like normal. Like, this is just a thing that happens. <laughs> he's just kind of <laughs> used to it. And it's like, what the fuck? It was like, wait, what? And then yeah, oh, he, he's yeah. Murray, the grave digger. Yeah. And he kind well, of he, uh, he's like, yeah, I, yeah, that is that uh, no one's been gotten up from the grave since at least Thanksgiving. Yeah, <laughs> he's I guess it happens a lot. And he yeah, he wasn't surprised about it at all. And he. He told him, hey, you're going to want to stay in the cemetery. There's, you know, nothing but death awaits you in the land of the living or whatever the hell he says. Um, he says that he says he says he warns him that something's going to happen. And he's like, and he's like, oh, you'll find out <laughs> when the guy runs away anyway. Yeah. And so that's kind of that sets the, the tone of what the whole rest of the movie is. So then he he runs back home. And as soon as he as soon as he walks in there, I had to clip it just so you can hear uh, how they are referring to it. Um, to referring to him being dead. Your mother and I, and the ambulance driver, and the coroner, and the embalmer, were all pretty much convinced that you were dead. <laughs> yeah. So nobody really seems phased by it at all. Yeah, it's funny. That's the part that I just, I just, I could not stop laughing over it. That shit right. right there. And uh, for anyone who may not know, that's Edward Herman playing the dad. Um, he was also the um, the grandfather on Gilmore Girls. Okay, never watched Gilmore Girls. Oh, I was obsessed. I love that show. <laughs> he looked familiar to me though, but I don't know why. I... Uh, well, he played Herman Munster in the two '90s Munsters uh, made for TV mm. remakes. They tried to get off the ground. Okay. Wow, and his yeah. name was Edward Herman, and he played Herman Munster. Mm-hmm. That's Unrelated, fitting. but yes. Hmm, all right. Uh, um, I don't know what else he would have been in that you would have seen. He's in a ton of stuff, so it could be. Yeah. It could be literally be anything. All right, that that works. You you call out what you need to call out. <laughs> <laughs> um, Can't help but feel that's uh, that's a little um, patronizing. I, I feel <laughs> just a little. No. <laughs> no. He was um, FDR in Annie? Was FDR a character in Annie? Yeah. You don't remember he, FDR? The, she goes to sing a song to, the, to him, and he flies her away in a helicopter or something? I don't remember. But yeah, I remember... I think FDR sings a song in that, too. I mean, I remember Carol Burnett and Tim Curry. That's about all I remember. Tim, Tim, If Tim Curry's in it, it's pretty memorable. Uh-huh. And it's easy to ignore anything else. Bernadette Peters is in Annie, too. Need to revisit right. Annie. Oh, let's do. Uh, are we are we going to do a musical podcast next? Uh, you don't have to sell me <laughs> on it, but you might regret it. <laughs> I don't know. I could find some. I could find some more, like I found last time. Zen- oh shit! That's what he was. All right, I had to look him up. Uh, Lost Boys. He played. He played Max on the Lost Boys. Oh fuck! He sure does. Yeah, that's that's I think where I recognized him from. Okay, that mm-hmm. makes sense. He's uh, also. In, oh, oh wait, wait. He's also in Overboard. He's the husband in okay. Overboard. 
that th- right. that, that, that makes that uh, I don't know if he throws her overboard or just doesn't go back for her after she falls overboard. But he's Goldie Hawn's rich delinquent husband. Ah, huh. yeah, there you go. Well, the, the more we know about this guy, the better. Mr. Mm-hmm. Herman, rest in peace, Mr. Herman. Yeah. So anyway, uh, he goes back home and then he just goes to school like it's the next day, like right. it's anything. And again, nobody at school gives a shit that he's dead. In fact, the teacher gives him a demerit and says, just because you're dead doesn't mean you get to be late to class. That does a great <laughs> joke. Yeah, there's a lot of there's a lot of great jokes. I, I don't think the delivery was there enough to really make it to really drive it home. But the, the, the lines were written out pretty well. I just I don't know if they pulled the I don't know if they pulled it like they should have. I think there was too many people doing this deadpan stuff. <laughs> make, it has offensive. <laughs> Some of us happen to be presently dead. Look, just because I have that sheet of metal underneath you in case anything drips off, I did call it a deadpan. So I guess, okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I've, I haven't quite, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a new day. This is a new time in the world. I don't know all the correct things to say. Uh, so I'm learning and the listeners are learning with us. So now everyone knows deadpan. It's maybe a little touchy. Don't say that to your undead friends. So uh, Miss, Missy's boyfriend, Buck, Missy's boyfriend is named Buck and Buck has a f- best friend named Chuck. Yes. Buck and Chuck. Buck and Chuck. Uh, oh, fuck. But Buck and Chuck um, like to fuck. Uh, Chuck is like, oh, is Philip Seymour Hoffman, and he is a weird little freak in this movie. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. He's like, not just a bully, he's a psychopath that's obsessed yeah. with Buck. He's like like an obsessive minion, and he is ready to straight up murder people for him. Yes. And the way it breaks down is um, Johnny is talking to Missy and it's like, okay, I came back for our date. And she's like, well, I wasn't serious. I just thought you were dead. Didn't expect you to come back. And she's not wanting to date him. But then Buck shows up and is super controlling. It's like, well, you're not going to be near him. And so she's like, okay, I'll pick me up at eight. And they decide to go see, uh, see, uh, what they? they go to the movies, right? They go to the movies. They see a double feature. One of the films is called <sighs> Die, Zombie, Die. <laughs> honestly i did expect to see this joke coming right because it's it's a it's a pretty uh a good like makeup and stuff but the they show you the movie and it's like like undead zombies wallowing and writhing and i just kept waiting for i kept waiting for a joke about it being offensive to show up and it takes like two three, three or four scenes for them to get around to it yeah yeah uh, did you did you so they get spotted at the movies by some people? Did you happen to recognize the two guys talking uh, about seeing Missy with a dead kid in the movie? No. So there 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 are two guys sitting next to each other, right? One's like, I think it's Missy dead kid. And there's a and one of them guy number one and guy number two is how they're credited in the film. Um, mm-hmm. and I'm, I'm bringing this up for a specific reason, because this movie comes out in 1993, exactly one month before Dazed and Confused. Okay. Uh, and one of the two guys in the theater is Matthew McConaughey, and this is his first motion picture role. Really? I didn't even catch that. <laughs> I'll have to go back and watch that. And what, say, what I say now, if you go back to that scene and you listen to him, you're like, oh, I, oh, yeah, I can yeah. hear it now. But yeah, yeah so, so, te- so we all know Days to Confuse is his first movie, but technically this was his first movie, um, but he has a bit role in it exactly one month before he plays Wooderson in, or four days of confuse comes out yeah that's that is interesting yeah i didn't i'll, I'll have to go back and watch that scene so there's a uh, lot of people in this fucking movie it really is and it, that's the weird thing there's there's a lot of people in this movie um there's a lot of good jokes in this movie but somehow it it just it didn't all like click to make it as big as it could have been maybe we'll get to the bottom of it here i don't know uh we're not going to uh, it didn't just fade it into obscurity like a lot of yeah there's this thing that a lot of art, which is the reason why we talk about movies like this, a lot of it, if it doesn't get the right audience at the right time, it just never gets seen by anyone. It just fades away. Yeah. Um, but this is this is not a bad movie. It just didn't have the right audience at the right time. 
Yeah, it's not. It's also not like a secret gem. Like you're not going to find this movie and be like on the floor the entire time. But it is. It is. It is a good movie. It just isn't like a secret classic. But it didn't right. deserve to fade away. And it's just it kind of occupies this weird space where it's like it's a it's it's like good enough, but it's not so bad that people are going to come f- come watch it. And it's not like a fantastic piece of like. Uh, like a diamond in the rough that people are going to be obsessed with if they find it. Yeah. It's not going to be, yeah, it's not going to jump out and be like, Oh yeah, yeah. but it's, it, I, I think it could find its home. I think it could find a, its audience. But yeah, so they're, they're, they're driving back. And at this point she's like, she, she's, she's a, she didn't expect the movie to be the way it was. And he says, well, there's a lot of prejudice to the undead. Yeah. And they start making out in front of her dad's house. And um, while she's nibbling on his ear, it comes off in her mouth. Your ear fell off. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> Look, it happens to the best of us. Oh, shit. Yeah. Very nonchalantly just, ah, shit. <laughs> so, that, so then he goes to his family doctor. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Played by Austin Pendleton, who's just in a lot of stuff. I like the doctor role. That was, that was yeah. a fun role. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's a... <laughs> He, and what does he tell the doctor says that uh, that he uh, needs to go talk to some other lady whose husband came back from the dead? Like, this is just a thing that happens. Like, <laughs> it's really yeah. very peculiar. Yeah, she died like 15 years ago or he died yeah. like 15 years ago and came back. This woman's husband, by the way, I, I don't know if you know Austin Pendleton because he's in everything, but you might recognize him as Max from the Muppet movie. OK, all right. Doc Hopper's like little minion. Yep, yep. As the as like the best, like the most obvious pull I could I could come. That from was his, yeah, like, that was a good one. That, that that resonates with me. I just watched that again not too long ago. So yeah, it's just a fantastic movie. Oh, He's also yeah. in Short Circuit. Um, well, another great movie. It doesn't really hold up very well. Uh, <laughs> yeah, there's a few. The, the the brown face part's a little rough, but uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's also in my cousin Vinny. Okay, but my cousin Vinny's just just a classic. Yeah. Um. So anyway, um, my cousin he, Vinny's with the guy who played the judge was the original Herman Munster. See, it's all that's connected. That's true. Um, it's all connected. Fred Gwynn. Fred Gwynn. There you go. He's in Pet Cemetery. Yes. Sometimes dead is better. <laughs> Ah, uh, yeah, good stuff. More, so, I think that's more as immortal as that character is. I think the parody of him on South Park is more memorable. <laughs> um, I would, I, I would, I was gonna say. So at this part, so the does the doctor take some of his flesh? I didn't quite catch that. I forgot to go yeah. back and rewatch it. Yes, yeah, he takes he, something of his, right? Yeah, he leaves. He leaves. He leaves uh, some zombie flesh. He, oh, I'm sorry. Johnny peels a whole chunk of flesh off his arm and gives it to the doctor. Oh, and that's the doctor right. is supposedly going to work on a cure. And spoilers here, the doctor in roughly 24 hours is able to synthesize a, a serum to rejuvenate youth using <laughs> Johnny's dead skin in yeah. less than a day. So we really should have had this guy on COVID detail. Because, yeah. the, right. because the, 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 the sheer speed of his output. Insane. Yeah, it would have been it would have been it would have been over. Before it started, we really would have only had like the three month lockdown. It would have been great. Mm-hmm. The curve would have been flattened. <laughs> I think we're still flattening it. I don't know what's going on now. Uh, yeah, I would say it's still pretty wrinkled. Yeah, I think you're yeah. right on that one. Uh, we, got, we still got some stuff to smooth out there. Uh, uh, but at least, um, at least I don't think that the undead can get COVID. I don't know. You might be fine. I think that is the true. Uh, that might be the true vaccination that we all need. Uh, <laughs> well, just just well, become a zombie. If there's any place to put that theory to the test, it's Texas. <laughs> so so run around licking some doorknobs and go find out for me. See what happens. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, just run to the nearest mega church where no one's been vaccinated. Yeah, <laughs> that's always great. So yeah, uh, so 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 uh, Johnny goes and talks to this lady whose husband came back from the dead, and she's the one that tells him that he needs to 
eat the flesh of the living to avoid decaying. And I feel that there is such a bigger story there that they don't even talk about. Like, where is her husband now? Who did he eat before? <laughs> and really, are, are you doing anything with those brains? Can I have some of them? You know, it's, it's, it's questions like that. Like, do you need right. all of your flesh? You have a lot of it. You know, what, three pounds isn't going to hurt you? Just kind of just like, you know, just like you open up your skull and just give me some of that and it would be fine. Oh, but shit. You know what? But she does. She. Oh, shit. You know, I just thought about uh, it's. She said that he needs to eat the flesh of the living. Yes. I've been giving you ground chuck from up the street. That's from a dead cow. Oh, I thought you were giving me ground up chuck. No, 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 no. That's later in the movie. But um, I don't know if that's really going to help you in the long run. Um, I, I might have to I, I might have to get you something living. Ah, fuck. All right. Um, I'll, 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 I'll talk to your wife, figure something out now. And I don't know. We'll, we'll figure it all out. Has um, anyone told her that I've been dead? It's been a couple of weeks. No, she went on the honeymoon without you. Um, I oh. told her to go. Um, I said, he'll, he'll catch up to you. He'll be on the next flight. And I just sent her off. So she's good. She, she's probably still waiting for you at the airport or she's out having fun. I don't know. Um, hopefully she's having fun. Um, and having a good time because she should, she deserves it. She deserves to have a good time. I mean, it'd be nice if you were there with her, I guess, but so yeah, he goes, he goes uh, back home cause he's freaking out about having to eat the flesh of the living. And he's trying to think of different ways. And, uh, Missy comes over to visit him. Uh, you know, this, this time, uh, ac- accidentally like pulls out a clump of hair and then he's like, you smell really nice. And then he sneezes his nose off and she gets gum for him and he rips his arm off and his foot falls off. But it was all just a dream. And I was like, oh, God, again with the dream sequence. Too many dream well, sequences. There, yeah, because like his dick falls off and everything. Yeah, yeah, it's it's all it's all. But it's and then I started thinking if this whole thing about him being a zombie is a dream, I'm going to scream at Patrick. They well, they, they did subvert it just a little bit. They didn't so, do the dream, but they were real close. They were real close. <laughs> I'm so glad they didn't do the dream now. Yeah. So it, anyway, the, the 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 long and short of it is, um, they had the date. She's trying to see if she wants to go to the prom with him, and uh, Buck has a problem with this. And so, because Buck has a problem with this, Chuck has a problem with this, and chases yeah. him, ready to kill him, ready to kill him again. Can you kill the undead? Uh, he could certainly try. Yeah, and uh, he he runs with the baseball bat. Do you want me to try? Or should we just let it roll? We'll just let it roll. I'm I'm, I'm good. I'm good. All right. All right. That's fine. I mean, I'm... The offers... I'll just say the offers on the table. I mean, same. Okay. It's like... Well, wait, what? (laughs) I I, I didn't say anything. Okay. (laughs) Anyway. uh, How about them cowboys? Yeah. So, so Chuck is a Chuck is a is a fucking maniac. Yeah, he's a, <laughs> he's a serial killing sociopath, <laughs> and he chases it. He chases him through the entire school flat with a baseball bat, breaks the baseball bat, and uh, and Johnny's cornered. And then Chuck turns to his left and sees a fire axe, <laughs> and um, he he goes to use that instead to ostensibly chop up this poor defenseless zombie who's done yeah. nothing wrong. No, really. And he, yeah, he lifts the axe up over his head like he's going to swing it down and just slice Johnny in half. But, but he's holding it backwards. And he accidentally hits himself in the head with the axe. And as he falls down dead, Johnny sees an opportunity and takes it. Yeah, he's like, well, you know, mm-hmm. <laughs> he's kind of a piece of shit. And he, he, he's, he's still living right now. I can go, I can go ahead and so he starts, eating his, he starts eating his stomach. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then and then of course uh his best friend and missy come up and see him and then i had to i had to clip that line too oh my god how could you you ate chuck not all of him <laughs> <laughs> that's great uh, that's a good line not all of him like come on what's he gonna do uh, with all of that 
But anyway, they Chuck is dead and they blame him because, you know, the old, you know, zombie at the uh, dead body. Of course, it's a zombie's fault. Like sometimes a person dies and a zombie just happens to be there. Bad media representation. <laughs> yeah, they get conditioned to think that a zombie is going to eat you. And then a guy winds up dead and a little bit eaten. And you assume that the zombie standing over him is the one that ate him. And it's, it's just wrong. Yeah. Well, I mean, he did eat him, but he didn't kill him. I mean, yeah, but who could really say that they wouldn't give him the same circumstances? <laughs> this is this is true. All right. Yeah, what's the three second oh. rule? <laughs> So, oh, yeah, if you're dead for three seconds, it still counts. So, yeah. Okay. Blood's it's still, still pumping. You're good. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so then I I absolutely love Johnny's parents. Yeah. Um, I, I kind of hope, I, uh, I think it would have been better if they were the only ones that were like 100% okay with everything and everybody else was a little bit freaked out. Yes. Um, I think it would have played better, but it was, you know, he comes home and you know, his his mom's like, oh, well, there's, you know, there's something in the fridge for you or whatever. <laughs> no, no, that was later. She's like, oh, I got you a I got you a snack. And then just like pulls out some kid that she snagged from a supermarket. And it turns out to be the uh, the other son of the father of Chuck. Yes, this is Chuck's little brother, because Chuck's dad shows up uh, with a group of his friends. Chuck's dad, Big Chuck. Yeah, Big Chuck shows up with just tons of guns and friends and like, Hey, we just, we need to, uh, we need to speak with dark and very, very calm, very nice. We need to speak to Johnny. It's like, there's, there's so much of this. Nobody is alarmed by anything at all in this movie. Yeah. That's, <laughs> that's, that's, that's the humor. And I don't think that it landed with everyone. I, I think, yeah, I think it was just, it was when everyone is like that, there's no humor in it. Cause that's just what this world is. If it was like a couple people were like that, I think it would have been funnier. But whatever. But anyway, uh, they, they, you know, they, they get run out of the house because the mom uh, uses a shotgun and starts shooting at them. Because, you know, that's just what his mom does because his mom's kind of a badass. This mom is what uh, what I believe the kids call ride or die. Yes. Also, also all of his friends are. Yeah, oh, they're all about it. They're <laughs> yeah, because they're like, let's eat. They're like, you should eat Buck. Let's go. I'll mm -hmm. help you kill him. <laughs> yeah, let's go, let's go get him for you. Yeah, and then and then Missy, uh, or he finally gives Missy the the gift he meant to give her when he was six, which was just a, a heart necklace that you open up and it's got a little locket on there, and there's a picture of each, each of them on their locket. So that was that was the gift he meant to give her, and he finally got to give it to her. Mm -hmm. And it and it came off as sweet to her in the movie, although it does feel a little weird to hold on to it that long and have both of their pictures. Yeah, that's kind of kind of creepy. But that, that, that's um, this true is, about most romantic gestures in movies. It's mostly always just stalking. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of it's it's very pleasant stalking. <laughs> um, and that's when the, 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 the villagers get outraged and want to demand to burn him. And that's when they that's when he throws that fantastic line. Shut up, you little zombie slut. <laughs> and that's Big Chuck with the zombie slut line. Big yep, Chuck yep, with the yep. zombie slut. Absolutely. Yeah. And then and, um, he so her dad comes to. to comes to the rescue he is a mm -hmm. sheriff he gets a crowd to disperse drives them back to johnny's parents house they have a nice dinner where he asks him to please get the hell out of town yeah and his mom's like go to the kitchen to get them butter for the croissants <laughs> and there's a guy in the fridge fantastic. Yeah. yeah and there's just this dead body in the fridge hanging out and she's like they she's like, i found it at the mortuary they're practically giving them away <laughs> <laughs> i loved his mom that was, she was fantastic um but, but yeah and uh and then you like their the dad ends up like telling him to leave yeah like he's like telling him to leave town and then he just clocks johnny just punches him yeah he forbids johnny to date his daughter and clocks him out and then he has another weird dream sequence another right? dream sequence. Yeah. and uh and then he well then it turns into a weird sexual fantasy where uh missy keeps keeps uh <laughs> him to um eat her yeah and that didn't feel on the nose sexual at all yeah not even a little bit <laughs> no it, it certainly wasn't enhanced by the fact that she was dressed like a schoolgirl with pigtails yeah yep yep <laughs> so anyway like i said marketed to 13 year old boys <laughs> So then, uh, but yeah, the, the base, the, the, the end of the film is he's going to go pick her up for prom, but then he's afraid he's going to eat her. 
but then the doctor finally shows back up and he's like, I found a cure. And he's like, fantastic. So they all think that he's going to go get cured. And really the doctor is strapped into a table and wants to take 40 pounds of flesh. <laughs> yeah. He basically just wants to, to use all of this raw zombie flesh as uh, more synthesis for his more materials for his uh, serum because he can market it as a beauty project for plastic surgery to rejuvenate people's skin. Yeah. Which was kind of weird. Um, like you said, it just invented that within 24 hours. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, what? Like 40 pounds. That's a small supply. Um, no, could he actually keep him alive and let him kind of go on for a while? Like, you don't know. I don't know these things. Like keep him running for a little bit. And so you can have a replant. Cause how, uh, I, I would, flesh, listen, how I, long I, a serum will that last? I don't, mm, I, I don't like this line of questioning. Well, I'm, I'm just curious. I, look, I I told you it's it's not it's not going to work in real life. Like it's just because it's in a movie doesn't mean that you can scrape my skin cells off and put just, them in a microwave I, with a chicken and suddenly it works. I just want to see if your skin will grow back. That's all. Well, You're already could, dead. Uh, let's let's trade. Let's trade. How about you scrape off my skin and I scrape off your skin and then we'll see. I I I don't I don't I don't like that. <laughs> I don't, I, I, yeah no we're we're not going to do that my skin will stay on i am living you are not that's kind of how things are going right now <sighs> see you I say that, the upper hand in this because i'm I, alive i don't like the like top down power hierarchy you're trying to enforce here uh with the whole living versus non-living what i i really like a more equitable exchange of power um, in which I, uh, in which you exchange um, your brain, and I get to eat it. Is there well, some way we could come to like a like an agreement here? No, that's that's pretty much why you're tied up in the corner. Shut up, you little zombie slut! <laughs> <laughs> Take umbrage, so, sir. The, the, umbrage. The, the the angry mob shows up to uh, to kill Frankenstein's doctor or the doctor, the zombie doctor, which is pretty much like a, a Frankenstein ish scene because he's up in the tower almost. It's kind of a it's a really interesting uh, dynamic. I thought that they put it on and that they uh, it kind of did there. Mm -hmm. um, and the, then the angry mob chases Johnny down the street to the cemetery. He he runs back to the cemetery for safety. But there is a fantastic line that gets said in the in the in the middle of that um, as they're as Johnny's running away. Um, Let the zombie go, and I'll buy you a pretty new dress. <laughs> Let the zombie go, and I'll buy you a pretty new dress. <laughs> right. So, <laughs> so um, Missy and uh, Johnny's friend, and uh, they they make a passion plea to the mob to not kill Johnny, and then Murray the grave digger makes a solid argument for not killing Johnny. Right. And it diffuses the crowd. And then um, Johnny goes to prom with Missy. Yeah. Yeah. He basically is like, he came back from the dead for you. Would you any, any would any of you do that? <laughs> like, what? He took a bullet for her. So, yeah. And then, yeah, he they get their dance. And then he wastes away because he is dying, decaying flesh and uh, finally dies for good on the dance floor. And, um, and they say they when they say I love you to each other. And she gives him uh, back the necklace. And then he wakes up uh, basically like the pearly gates. Yeah. Yeah. He's in heaven now. Yeah. Um, and he goes to see St. Peter, who is British. Yeah. Well, you know. And angry. <laughs> hey. <laughs> I'd be a little angry, too, if I was him. I'm be honest. Mm hmm. It's just, it's just a lot of people dying lately. And you just got to deal with all that shit. <laughs> And he's like, you aren't supposed to just hop around down there. <laughs> you're supposed to come right on up. Is that what you're supposed to be? Doing? Are you just hopping around down here? No, I was See? in hell. Oh. But, like, like Gimcrack just reached in and just plucked me back up. Oh, how was it? You know, weirdly enough, not as hot as Texas. Yep. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, he says there's a mistake and he wasn't supposed to die and that the gunman was supposed to slip on coffee so then he's like now i'll send you back to where it all started basically so he sends him 
all the way back and we rewind the movie back until uh, mm-hmm. he's at the convenience store again. Yeah. You think it OK, he's not going to get shot this time and he gets shot again. <laughs> and then the, there's a good line where he where after he gets shot, like the guy slips on coffee and now. And then as he's dying or as he's laying there, he's like, oh, now you slip on the coffee. Turns out the bullet hit the necklace, didn't kill him. But it was after he declared his love for Missy, and uh, so they decide to give it a go, and they go to prom anyway. Yeah. And then I guess it's nobody remembers him being a zombie, because he never was. We uh, rewound time. Yep. And that's it. <laughs> that's my voice. I could, I, could, I could see why it was not a huge success. <laughs> um, really, can you? Yeah, there's just a lot of... Uh, things that it just didn't quite flow correctly i would say like there's a lot of uh-huh. things that were just i don't know it the humor i think was was good as like standalone jokes but overall when there's just too many of them it just didn't yeah it just didn't work um so yeah um but overall it was it was fun i mean it's it's a movie i'd probably watch it with like my kid when she's a little bit older mm-hmm. so not six probably not um, oh, damn. I mean, like, yeah. Like, it keeps coming up every time I say I say a movie. Oh yeah, I loved this as a kid. And you're like, oh, this is too <laughs> appropriate. Or I'm like, yeah, I'll just leave the movie playing on in the background. You're like, I fucking watch this all the time. <laughs> <laughs> um, what, what even was that movie? You know? <laughs> oh, I think it was WNUF. Oh yeah. Every year. Because I was like, oh, yeah, that was a great movie just to like have on at a party and just people are like, what the hell is this? And just yeah, catch them off guard. Anywho. Uh, so, yeah, that was uh, that was my my boyfriend's back. Not a bad flick. Mm-hmm. Not the worst one. Yeah. Uh, well, I think we gave most of the the the, the, the behind the scenes as we go, because it's not a lot. Of, it's not it's like, it's going to be like some expose of this is why this movie exists, you know. It's it's behind it's my boyfriend's back, but I do have <laughs> I, I I don't have a murder she wrote connection, but I do have a connection oh. to a ni- to like an eighties nineties um you know elderly person solves a crime oh do type tell. TV show yeah so Danny Zorn yeah yeah he was in an episode of the Cosby Mysteries oh god. <laughs> You're going with Matlock. You went Cosby. <laughs> I've done Matlock before. I forgot this show existed, and I saw it in his IMDb, and I'm like, "Oh no, how unfortunate." I'm looking here, and uh, it seems to have lasted for one season. All right. Which is uh, hmm. When did this review? When did this person post this review? 2003. Okay, that explains it. It mm-hmm. says, an enjoyable Cosby show. <laughs> <laughs> when did you have this opinion, sir? Oh, 2003. <laughs> that's, in 2003, that's five. It is the only review on this. Nope, there's five. There's five reviews. Let's look. All right. When's the most recent one? 2020. Fun series. Too bad how it turned out. <laughs> okay. Okay. The reviews are from 2003. 2009, 2006, 2012, and then in 2020, someone's like, okay, I, yeah. I want to weigh in on the Cosby Mysteries now in 2020. <laughs> There's a lot of other shit going on it. in 2020. Let's yeah. see. Fun series. Too bad it turned out. Whatever you think of Cosby. <laughs> oh, boy. At least his performances were always entertaining, fun, and hilarious. Uh, this series was actually really good, though I think it only ran one season. A no-brainer. <laughs> well, I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> it's excellent. Rita Moreno is awesome. Uh, so is Mo Steph. Apparently Mo Steph is in this. Uh, it's just a shame that Cosby's real life ruined everything. But if you can get past that, watch this series. Hey, if anyone's listening, don't get past that. Like, it's it's a it's a shame that Bill Cosby ruined his his reputation ruined this series. Don't 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 worry about the actual people's lives that he ruined. Yeah, but he tarnished this television series. <laughs> yeah. Like like, <laughs> like listen priorities, I, people. 
we we all grew up in we all grew up in the eighties to nineties. We have all seen way more than we should have of any Cosby property. You don't need to watch mm-hmm. it now. There's nah. there's there's no reason. Like just just let it go. Let's just go watch another season of Supernatural or something. I don't know. Just, yeah, just do I, something. I, I think Supernatural is safe. Go to go to Supernatural until we're proven otherwise. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. Oh. Weird screeching. It might be an animal. I'm not sure. Oh, you, are you hungry? I, I think I think I hear I think I hear your cat. Uh, you don't really like that thing, do you? I mean, I know you like Alf. Have you ever wondered why Alf liked cats so much? You know, it's not really doing it for me. No, no. All right. Well, you don't 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 say I never tried. Um, I, I think I'm getting a handle on it. I think we can. Yeah. I, I think I think I think we can beat this. All right, all right. Well, See, let's, let's... Spe- speaking of beating things, yes, there's a dead horse. <laughs> oh, wow! There's just you just can't get past this, can you? <laughs> Even I'm doing it now. In a way, I brought you here to offer you a job. You think you can do it better, so here's your chance. Is that the dead horse you're beating? Yeah. What are the three things you change? <laughs> I would do. Uh, I would do less dream sequences. I think one or two would have been fine, but I'm. I think there was like four of them. Yeah. Um, and that just gets to be a bit much. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I would, I would have at least, I would have a, at least a few people freaked out about a zombie so that the deadpan people, again, no offense. I just don't know the correct term to use. <laughs> the other people would not, uh, would, would seem to be a little bit more, uh, funny because they're not bothered by this. I thought long and hard about this third thing and I came up with it. Put the fucking song in the movie. The song it's was in not, the trailer. It? it was yeah. not in the movie. Put the song in the movie. I wonder. I wonder what kind of legal loophole they they went through that they could afford to put it in the trailer, but they couldn't afford to put it in the film. No, well, that was probably it. They 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 bought it just for exclusive use in the trailer. Mm-hmm. It just costs way too much to put in a movie. That's yeah. That's what I'm thinking yeah. there. But yeah, yeah. So that's. But uh, yeah. So that that was. Uh, that was that was my boyfriend's back, and I think I think my my co-host is back. I think now you seem to be getting kind of a hang of things. Yeah, You're feeling yeah, better. No, I do actually. I don't feel like this overwhelming sense of unending hunger. Well, that's that's good. Maybe the ground beef did help. The ground chuck. Yeah, yeah. I think that I think <laughs> you just you know just eat a whole bunch of like raw beef, and I think we'll be fine. All right. Well, you know what? I think that's I, I, I think I think that'll work. So. What if I, what if I, I mean, I, I need to go use the bathroom real quick, but if I unchain you right now, everything should be fine. You, you'd be cool with that, right? Like, yeah, yeah, no, totally. Okay. All right. um, well, I'll tell you what, um, I'll go ahead and do that. Uh, your, you know, your, your wife will probably be back soon. We got a lot of cleaning up to do here. I mean, a lot of cleaning up. <laughs> Did you look at that? Ooh, that, yeah. Um, so we should probably get started on that because she's going to be pissed if she comes back from her honeymoon and the house looks like this. Uh, <laughs> she's I mean, a little blood. She's, she's, pr- she's probably going to be pissed that you never showed up. Um, so at least make sure when she comes back, the house looks in order. All right. So I'm going to just undo your little things right here. Oh, oh. thanks. Wow. Man. Ah! <laughs>